Sorry po, sino doon si Joe? Pero hindi na pinsan niya pala. Sino doon sa kanila mag-start? Hindi kakain na kami kasi may lesson si Joshua. Ano po yun? Kaya nalig kami ng konti. Bago mag-7, sinusundo si Joshua kasi birthday pa lang pinsan niya na kapitbahay namin. Sabi ko, ay hindi kami pwede. So, kain ka lang sandali. Sabi ko, kumain lang ng pizza po. Ah, pero paano yan? Ano, actually, okay lang din naman ako kung kunwari ano, bukas ng gabi. What, what do you think? Okay for, for the birthday kayo? Okay lang po. Ano, uh, nakapag, nakapag-hello na si Joshua din. Okay, oh, sige, sige, sige. Ito, sige. neighbor All naman. Right. Neighbor naman po namin sila. Pwede naman. Oh, nagkikita naman lagi. Pwede okay. pang kumain bukas. Pwede pa naman. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, it's been really hectic. That's why I haven't been able to respond except for the, there was that one question na uh, I said, tama naman. Pero ito, uh, actually ngayon ko na matitignan. No? Sides of a rectangle, one and three, diagonals intersect, forming an angle of theta form sine theta. Now, this is one of those um, questions which is rather vague to say you're right, there are two angles uh, that can be considered. In the figure, one is acute, the other is obtuse. The, the, uh, so that's the, the, those are the two angles made by the diagonals. But you're right, it doesn't matter because they're supplementary, so their signs are going to be equal to each other. So. Uh, it doesn't matter which one we consider. So, ginawa mo, yeah, three halves, one half. So, that makes DE something that we can determine. Square root of 10 over 2. Okay. Uh, so, by the law of science, that's what you did. DE over sine DFE equals EF over sine EDF. So I, I see what you are doing. You're using the law of signs. And okay. there is nothing wrong with that. But the, the thing is, as soon as you see that the triangle is a right triangle, so because you are looking at it on a EDF, this one, the, the one that I just marked, it up, oh, and say to know EDF, and DFE, this is 90 degrees. You don't have to use a law of sines. So from this, you see that sine of, um, you used EDF equals opposite one half over the length of the hypotenuse, square root of 10 over 2. Oh, so I got one over that. right triangle. So oh. mo, a lot of these uh, theorems, mga ano, uh, law of cosines. It's true for uh, all triangles, but where, when you get a ninth, when you get a right triangle, Pythagorean theorem ang bansa, which means when you have a right triangle, what can the law of cosines? Pythagorean theorem na siya. And the law of sines naman, if one of the angles you're gonna consider is well, if it's coming from a right triangle. So, katawa lang siya. He, hindi na kailangan ng, ano, ng law of signs. The, the law of signs, kumbaga mangyayari, when applied to a right triangle, will give you what you would have gotten out of, you know, ng so katawa. Oh, so, kung, kung ganun kasi po, uh, then theta is 2 times sin, it's 2 times EDF. So, what's sine 2 EDF? Double ang gano'n naman po. Oh, oh, oh. So ito, ah, nag, ano ka na naman, nag-exact ka na naman, nag-approximation ka, and nag, nag sign inverse ka. Kaya, kaya hinuhuli ko ng, ano, eh, ng inverse, uh, ng inverse trigonometric functions eh, kasi there is a way to determine things exactly. We will definitely talk about inverse trigonometric functions kasi kailangan yun when solving equations. But yun nga, for, for now, I want you to try not to use them unless it's really necessary. Ayan. Kasi uh, the, the, the idea being, from a computational perspective, okay, you get 18.4349. But the moment you use an approximation, when you use it, parang nawawala ka ng 100% guarantee. Kasi zero, uh, 3 over 5, that's uh, 0 0.6, of course. But when you're using an approximation, how do you know the answer really is 0 0.6? What if... Ano, ano pala talaga siya? What if it's really 0 
599999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
so that I can refer to the figure. <laughs> R.I.P. Eh, sumasama nung... Yeah. Kailangan po yung manual. Just wait a lot. Ayan. No! Nagawa mo ka pala. There are other controls here. Okay, so ayan. So para nasa David, we don't have to scroll up and down. So a side left. B, D over sign 30, and then A, B over sign A, D, B, and then C, D over sign, uh, okay, C, D over sign 30, A, C over sign A, D, C, and because A, C equals A, B, wait, hold on, sorry, malinong, um, ano ba talaga yung equal, di ba A, B equals A, D? A B equals A D, pero in your figure, equal din A C. Ah, oh po, yes, I had I had to point out sorry po. Um, so ah wait, how do I explain this? Ito na nagkap na 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 switch mo. Ah, let let's change the problem so that. Ah, mayroon na po ako binigay na proof eh na why A C must equal A D. Mayroon na po ako na lagis pa ba? Why AC must equal AB? Um, uh, wala eh. I mean, it's... Ayun po sa taas. Yung yun sa side po ng figure. Oh, okay. Sige nga, sige nga. Uh, let, let's see. Uh, by S, A, S, A, C. Wait, what? What is the S? Wait a po. Uh, <laughs> no, we, we, we don't know this eh. We, we don't know that. AB po is equal to AD. Alam po, alam po natin A, B is equal to A, D. And then we know uh -huh. the angles are the same. We can actually tell if A, C is equal to A, D. No, it, it doesn't follow eh. So parang you, you're, you're saying these three sides are all congruent? In no. the end, not necessarily. Diba? No. Because, no. I mean, what I would draw it like this. I think nagkamali ka na nang tingin. Anyway, it's okay. Time for you to restart, which also points out that uh, yun nga kasi, when, when you draw a figure accurately, makikita mo na, okay, uh, halimbawa, you draw AB equals AB equals 3. So, kumari, ito, A, B, tapos D. I saw so easy. So, that dapat ng A nandun sa gitna. And then when you try to draw A, C uh, to, to complete the triangle, tapos ito, this is 30 degrees. So ito, this is 30 degrees. But even if you didn't know that it's 30 degrees, parang papag-drawing mo, makikita mo na itong A, C, parang mas mahaba. So we with a sufficiently good enough drawing, it makes you wonder about certain things you might end up concluding. So, kumbaga, uh, mas madali mong makita na, wait, parang malabo na mas mahaba to, or malabo na equal dito. Alright? So, anyway, uh, try again. Wait, uh, this problem. B to mas malabo. Okay. So, try na lang ulit. Apo. Okay, so, uh, try. Okay. <laughs> Alright. First time po nagamit yung highlighter. Oh. Uh, uh, sige, G -g gamitin ulit natin. Pag magsasolve tayo, ganito ha. X squared plus 2X. Okay. Okay ba yan? Okay ba yan? Okay. Mga ano, sign of 30 degrees. Do you understand that, Joshua? <laughs> Impossible. Is it, is it very clear? Okay. That's the clearest I could teach it. Okay, try again. <laughs> oh no, what happened? Well, because I started erasing the drawing because next time that you submit, we are gonna replace this. Okay, anyway, 
Uh, meron pa namang ibang problems for you to try like this. So, now that there was another problem that you submitted uh, in the February 12 page. Okay, ito, I think. Ito. Um, I, just, I, I pasted it. Oh, wait. Did, did I paste it? Hindi pa pala. Ito, I'm, I'm going to paste it now. Uh, yung pala po, iba na yung nakapi. Huh? Sinave niya po? Yeah. Wow. In my... Okay. So I save it and then I... Uh... So this is... Uh... Actually, the, the, the result is... Called Stewart's theorem. Oh, but. And so, so, the, the, so what I ask you is to provide the proof of Stewart's theorem. So, so the idea is that you, you have a triangle, and so the sides are A, B, and C. So this is the side of length A, and then you have uh, and B and C, and then from a vertex you draw a segment going to the opposite side. And suppose it divides the opposite side into these lengths n and m. So therefore, um, yeah, a is equal to n plus m. And then what's the length of d? So the length of d is the formula that you arrived at. So that's called um, Stewart's theorem. So your d squared equals i have never really gotten actually to remember this. Like anytime I, I need to find the length of D, unless if I can remember Stuart's theorem, then I wouldn't have to use law of cosines. But this is one of those things that I could never ever memorize. Well, you know, I <laughs> don't, don't need to, because there's mnemonic to more easily under, uh, remember it. And B squared plus N C squared over A minus M N. Bang siguro gusto niya pa i-rearrange para mas maganda. Yeah. Uh, para ano nung ito nung D uh, A D squared uh, plus A M N equals M D squared plus N C squared. So na iba nung ano nung dad. Plus, ayun po. Uh, ito. So na, 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 narinig mo na to. Alright. The dad was man, it was bomb to sink. <laughs> so, yeah, if, if you've encountered that already. So, we have uh, some, let's just see if there are some other. Hey, I know, we may have a lot math induction problems here. Uh, I'm so near. I'm so near. All right, so yes, I guess again, us, uh, there in bus, uh, uh, January 20 to be bid, um, the metric and the metric identities. Okay, all right, and then I think because, uh, uh I wonder if there are some other folk workers, I think, well, I don't do so. So, January 26, all right, so February. Then February 5, yeah, we should just talk about that. And so, all right. Okay. So, for today, before we talk about inverse trigonometric functions, because I, I want this to be a theoretically sound discussion, hindi nung basta lang magko-compute. Because I realize sometimes some my college students go, um, sure, they know how to carry computations. Madali lang mag, ano eh, madali lang mag punch in ng values sa calculator. But I find that sometimes, dahil kulang ng understanding nila, um, they give an answer that's close to what I'm looking for, but it's actually not what I'm looking for. Parang ng idea na, di ba? If uh, alpha and beta are uh, supplementary to each other, then they will have the same sign. But mamagiging pareho ng sign nila. 
So, nangyayari, uh, when students end up with the need to solve an equation, kumara, I ask them, so, uh, to, to solve a particular problem, so, which requires them to figure out the value of x such that sine of x is equal to three-fifths, a lot of them would naively just uh, punch into their calculators sine inverse of three over five because it's so easy in your calculator sine inverse of three-fifths without recognizing that, you know what? The, the value that you're coming up with might be this alpha, but what if the problem really is looking for beta? Okay, so I mean, but, but if you understand uh, a situation like this, so you, you realize that, you know what, sine inverse is not the end of the story. Okay, so what if what you need is not sine inverse of three fifths, but it's supplementary angle. All right, so it's not alpha, but the value of beta that's needed. Okay. But I would first like to talk about the graph of the sine and cosine functions. Okay. Oh no, yun pa yung hardest thing to ever draw. <laughs> graph of the sine and cosine functions. Okay. So let's compare the graphs of f of x equal to cosine of x. And uh, here on the side, the graph of g of x equal to the cosine. OK, not the cosine of x, of course, but the sine of x. Okay. So observe that, um, Diba, if If you go back to the unit circle and then um, choose an angle, let's say, you know, alpha, then if you look at the, so this is the unit circle, the coordinates of that point, they would be cosine alpha and sine alpha respectively. And then if we are to consider not the angle alpha, but alpha plus 360 degrees. Okay, so the purple is alpha plus two pi in range and measure. Let me move the label of alpha here. Okay, alpha in orange. So what's gonna happen is that um, alpha and alpha plus two pi are gonna be coterminal, meaning the terminal side of their angles and standing position are the same. So alpha and alpha plus two pi are coterminal. Therefore, the coordinates uh, ng, uh, so we would have ended up with the coordinates uh, cosine of alpha plus two pi comma sine of alpha plus two pi. But it's the same point, Diba. Right? It's the same point. You're going to end up in the same location, which means that uh, cosine of alpha is equal to cosine of alpha plus two pi. And sine of alpha equals sine of alpha plus two pi, okay? So before graphing, so let me point out that uh, really what's going on is that, okay, cosine of x equals the cosine of x plus two pi equals uh, cosine of, if we add another two pi, so we get x plus four pi, the cosine would be the same. In fact, we could add any multiple of two pi. So you'd have cosine of eight pi, sorry, x plus eight pi, pareho pa din. When you take the cosine. Or, well, if you subtracted multiples of two pi. So cosine of x minus 20 pi. So pareho pa din. Nung magiging value, 
when you evaluate at the cosine function. Same with the sine function. So we say that um, f of x equal to cosine of x is periodic with period i. Okay. Ibig sabihin na period. Okay. Ayun nga, f of x equals f of x plus 2 pi for any value of x. Which means that if you're going to look at the graph of the cosine function, okay, so kumara ito, ng graph ng, uh, so ito, let's say this is the value a. And then here is the number B. If you go further, A plus 2 pi, and then ito I B plus 2 pi, then the point on the graph of the function at A will be the same as the Y coordinate uh, there where at, at A plus 2 pi. Okay, kasi itong point na to, ano to, A comma cosine of A. Itong point naman na ito, A plus 2 pi, comma the cosine of A plus 2 pi. Okay? Pero dahil periodic, ng cosine function, ng cosine of A and cosine of A plus 2 pi, they're going to be equal. Which means these two orange points their y coordinates are equal, therefore, magka level sila. Same height, same altitude. Similarly, let me use a green point. Ito. For b and the corresponding point at b plus 2 pi, pareho. So that means if you look at, uh, however, the graph of the cosine function looks like between a and b, kunwari ganyan, okay, then over another interval having the same length, a plus 2 pi uh, until b plus 2 pi. So ito, ang length ng interval is b minus a. Ang length nitong interval is also b minus a. So so long as you went from a and then you went forward until a plus 2 pi, okay, you're going to see the same thing. The same thing happening. All right. So for uh, the graph of the cosine and sine functions, Okay. And I think you're already familiar with this. You, you've seen the graph, right? Okay. The graph of sine of x is also periodic with period pi. So I just wanted to uh, start, you know, not, not, it doesn't hurt to start from the very beginning. So the usual marks are uh, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi. And then here is level 1, tapos andito ang negative 1. So the cosine of 0 is 1, the cosine of 90 degrees is 0, the cosine of pi is negative 1, Cosine of 3 pi over 2, so that's 270 degrees, is 0. Cosine of 2 pi back to 1. All right, so the is something like this. Oh, what's the chamba? 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 <laughs> Don't you think I can <laughs> into two pi? That was into five pi over two. Sige, papakit, papakitaan, papakitaan ng lakas. You have, you have, ano, you have infinite power points. You can draw the sine wave without any, without any errors. Hindi naman. All right. Wala ka lang magzoom in, kasi sure pag magzoom in ka wala na. All right, pangit na. Eba. Masta. Um, well, I, I guess you, you know. I've been drawing these graphs on paper 
on a blackboard, on a whiteboard, way before you were born. Let's, let's think of it that way, okay? Way before you were born, my friend. So, yeah. Flexion. Ayun, ba? No. Ayan. Ah, sige, pagpapangitin na natin. <laughs> Hindi na periodic. So, so, that's the graph of the cosine function. And now for the graph of the uh, sine function. Okay. Because I know you approve. What? You're gonna no. definitely approve what I what I'm gonna do. <laughs> what? No, 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 no. Oh yes, yes, yes. There's uh -huh. nothing you can do about. <laughs> All right. I got revenge. I will hold on. I All right. Okay. Hmm. Actually, ah, no, my my hair up, no, my hair up, no. Because I I want to erase the orange lines. Eh. The, the orange ah, points. Sige, sige. Pagbibigyan na yata. Pagbibigyan na yata. Pagbibigyan na yata. All right. Aha. Aha. Okay. So the, the, the thing with uh, things like this is sometimes even if you know what you're going to do, uh, sometimes you, you need to practice doing it so that you get some muscle memory. Like when you're reading, um, you might know the mechanics, but you really just need to practice reading. So I think it's the same with drawing and, and sketching. You just need to keep on doing it. So even if sometimes it appears to be just a tedious mindless task. So, kailangan pa rin do it. One and negative one. All right. So, this time, a sine of zero is zero. Sine of pi over 2, 90 degrees is one. So, gonna do no motion, yeah. Why do many curves po look like the parabola? At least part of it. It is. I have never seen po yung curve na para sa para sa semicircle. Par puro po yung para para parabolic yung itsura ng mga curves. Uh, well, may... actually, we, we just make the the comparison with a parabola. But but of course, no arch ng uh, sine or cosine graph. Hindi naman talaga siya parabola. Eh. There there are gonna be like some slight uh, subtle distinctions. I think kasi when uh, we start with uh, Looking at graphs, for linear functions, you get a line. So, measure simple enough. Siya. The next graph that we draw is that of a parabola. So, either it opens down or it opens up. So much so that anytime we need to draw something like this, we na compare it to parabola. All right. But, we lang, ang una natin kasi in graph the curve parabola. I mean, I suppose kapag the gano, for some reason, like in some universe, students started drawing uh, the graph of the sine and cosine curves. No mga students sila, they, they would be wondering, bakit nung graphs ng quadratic function, parang, ano, parang part ng sine curve or parang part ng cosine curve. So I think, I mean, that's my hypothesis, that it depends on what you were first accustomed to doing. So na ano lang, na ano lang kasi nung parabola eh. So that's what I think. Ah, okay. Semi-circle or semi-ellipse. Ah. Hmm. All right. And so on. Okay, so that's uh, the, these are the graphs of the sine function and the cosine function. What if ano? Um, ano nung effect ng uh, following modifications? Let's say um, f of x is equal to two 
cosine x. What do you think is the effect of the inclusion of this two in front is going to be? Y is going to be twice the normal, so the amplitude will increase. All right. So anyway, are, are you familiar with the amplitude and um, uh, the, how, how the period Apo. changes? All right. All right. So sige, and the phase shift, already familiar with that? Apo. All right. So sige, uh, then hindi na ako magtatagal dito. Maybe isang pasada lang. All right. So that we could leave this portion on the graph of sine and cosine functions. So for example, cotangent, let's have a look at... Cosecant, second, cotangent, versines, coversines. Vercosine, cover cosines, oh no. Okay. So actually, kung familiar ka na doon, I actually, punta na tayo sa iba. Alright? Kasi actually, gusto ko na din mag-inverse trigonometric function, sir. Alright? It's, okay. it's, it's going to come to me. Yung mga ano po, errors. It's coming. <laughs> They're coming. Well, hindi, hindi naman errors. Okay? I, I mean, when, when you were... Uh, solving all those problems where we used um, inverse trigonometric functions, they were, the, the, the logic was correct. The logic was correct. Parang ayun nga lang, nangyayari ko, ang issue ko lang is with the approximations that result out of it. Okay. Inverse trigonometric functions. Oh wait, uh, by the way, hold on, sorry. Um, are you familiar with one-to-one -one functions? One-to-one po. Oh, uh, one-to-one -one functions. I've heard, but then I don't remember anymore. I forgot. All right, all right. Okay, okay. So, sige. Okay, good, good, good. Parang bigla ko naalala. One-to-one functions. Okay. All right, okay. F is a one to one function abbreviated one dash one for obvious reasons, one to one. Okay, and the condition is, hold on, some data. One minus one function or zero function. <laughs> uh, Okay, so f is a one to one function if, okay, um, whenever um, f of a equals f of b, it follows that a equals b. Um, it's abstract, all right, but, but uh, don't worry, we, we are uh, going to discuss this uh, equivalently. Okay, if um, C is not equal to D, then F of C is not equal to F of D. On the first look, some students have a, uh, are not able to digest right away, but uh, the, the best way to talk about this is um, well, uh, by an example, okay? So the, actually, let, let, let me modify this, okay? Uh, a function f, with domain on uh, with, with domain and interval i. Um, you're familiar with I I intervals, right? Uh, okay. It could be an open interval. It could be a closed interval. So to zero seven, and then it could actually be half open, half closed. Pending again. Or pwede din ng interval na negative infinity going to 6. So these are intervals. Usually, we think of a function kasi, 
uh, we, we hardly uh, talk about the domain. Okay, but for what I'm gonna do later, so I want us to be conscious of the fact that when we're talking about functions, there is a domain. Sometimes we we just don't consciously think of the domain. Okay, so function f with domain and interval i is a one-to-one -one function if whenever f of a equals f of b. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, with A and B elements of I. So, syempre galing sa domain. Equivalently, if C is not equal to D, with uh, C and D taken from I, then F of C is not equal to F of B. Okay, at first I will illustrate one to one functions, well, what they are, two equivalent conditions here. I'll consider the function f of x equals x squared. Okay. Um, uh, as opposed to, wait, actually, let me start with another one. Get it around. f of x equals uh, 2 x cubed plus 1. All right. Uh, Joshua Ganeta. Suppose F of A equals F of B because they are both equal to fifty five. Then, what can you conclude about the values of a and b? We we can say they're equal, but we can't say they're fifty-five though. So the function f of x is two x cubed plus one. Suppose f of a equals f of b equals fifty-five. What conclusion can we draw out of that? is equal to b there's no other there's no other possible thing yeah in, in fact what's the value of a and of b does it necessarily have to be 55 and, uh, just think of this situation for now f of a equals f of b equals 55. what's the value of a F of A equals 55. Hmm. So 2A cubed plus 1 equals 55. Oh, okay. I see, I see, I see. May pala po nakasulat sa likod na Fx. Okay, okay. So, 54, 54, 27. A is equal to 3. Tapos on... What about, what about B? B rin po is equal to 3. Alright, so A equals B because they are in fact both equal to 3. Alright? And in fact, there is nothing special about 55. Alright? In fact, okay, as long as f of a equals f of b, whether the common value is 54 or whether the common value is the square root of 7 or whether the common value is negative pi divided by 27, what's going to happen is that a is going to be equal to b then A is still equal to B, all right? So therefore, this function F is one-to-one. -one. So ibig sabihin ng one-to-one, -one, so you can think of it this way, okay? Um, there is only one number oh, in one the one domain. That has, that has that value. 
yeah, that is responsible for producing 55. Okay, so if you think of any output, there is only one person responsible for it. So kumbaga, ano, um, nung crime, alam mo na agad kung sino ang gumawa. Hindi ka na, walang dahil. Ah, sino, sino gumawa dito kay 55? Ah, si 3. Wala kang pagpipili yan kasi si A or si B ba? Eh, pareho lang sila eh. Yun din naman yun, si A at si B, yun pare. So that's what happens with a one-to-one -one function. For every output, or for every point in the range, okay. For every point in the range, like for example, fifty-five. Tapos ang to the fifth po ano yun? Magpitik mga ad 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 degree. Yes, 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 yes. So for uh yeah for, for a simple enough uh, polynomial of at degree kasi kung ganare 2x cubed minus x squared plus 7 may may kasama ka ng x squared eh. so uh but baka hindi na one to one okay so so anyway this function f is one to one so for every point in the range there is exactly one uh a uh, corresponding point in the domain. Mm. Okay, so therefore F is a one-to-one -one function. Let's take um, G of X equal to it all x squared plus one. Okay. Suppose f of a equals f of b equals 10. What can you conclude about a and also b? They are, oh, it's unknown if they're equal. They could be. Yes, it's unknown. Because if 10, yeah. 10 equals 9, it both negative mm -hmm. 3 and negative 3. Mm -hmm. All right. So, hindi mo alam, I mean, kung sino ang guilty, sino nagproduce kay 10. Because you have two candidates, but you really don't know which one. All right. Then, um, A uh, is 3 or negative 3. Same with B. But the thing is, we cannot conclude it does not follow that A is equal to B. Because in fact, if A is equal to 3, and then B is equal to negative 3, and the Hindi equals C, A, and B. So what this tells us is that for the number 10, which is a point in the range, there is no exact so, so there is no unique corresponding point in the domain. Okay. So uh, G, this function G is not one to one. Okay. So no. nung nilag nung nilagay ko equivalent uh, definition, if C is not equal to D, then F of C is not going to be F of D. For for example, kumare. It is a function 2x cubed plus 1. Uh, it is clear that 5 is not equal to 7. All right. Uh, it is clear that negative 3 is not equal to negative 3. And it's trivial, but yes, because 5 is not equal to 7, then f of 5 must not be equal to f of 7. Sorry, negative 3 is not equal to positive 3. So therefore, f of negative 3 is not equal to f evaluated at 3. All right? Because, because if in case f of negative 3 happened to be equal to f of 3, but if the function f is 1 to 1, I did that, but negative 3 is equal to 3. Pero hindi eh. Clearly, negative 3 and f of 3 are different. 
So for a one-to-one -one function, you can think of it this way. Every point in the domain does its own thing. There's no imitation. Kung ano ang ginawa ng isa, hindi na pwedeng gawin ng iba. All right? And like with... Yes, go ahead. Kung baga po yung sa, ano po, sa parabola po, ginawa niyo po yung x, you make, may, may give po x equals y squared ngayon. Kung ginawa niyo po, uh, kung, kung may ganun po, uh, with that, is there such a, kung baga one to one na, uh, there's only one corresponding point in the range, uh, in the domain that is cor that corresponds to the range. So kaya po, yung parang hindi naman po na one, one is to one. Is there, uh, are there functions na, kung, uh, there, there are, there is not just a single point in the domain that belongs to a single point in the range. Ah, then in that case, hindi siya point in the range if, if there's no corresponding point in the domain. Kasi ano definition ng range? Sila nung mga output. Ay, ano po, ano, mer right? mer po, more than one pala po yung point on the domain that corresponds to only one point in the range. Uh, only one, oh, ano pala po? Uh, more than one point in the range that corresponds. Huh? More than one point in the domain that corresponds to one range. To, to, to the same point in the range? Well, okay. halimbawa, ano? Kanwari, nung sa domain, negative 3 and positive 3. Tapos f of x equals x squared. Then in the range, they both co correspond to 9. Is that that, that what we're saying? Uh, Pwede, pwede na po po i-reverse lahat ng functions? Ikumaga i-flip by just changing the variable? Then, I'm not sure what you are saying. If you would like to repeat it again, kasi I think in that case, hindi na siya function eh. But just so I'm absolutely sure what you're referring to, can you say it again? Is it possible that? It's possible to flip any function sideways by changing the variable from x to y and y to x. Ah, uh, then hindi na siya, uh, are you thinking about ito kasi this is y equals x squared. So now you're thinking of uh, uh, what if you look at x equals y squared. Because okay. then uh, it, uh, well, yeah, you're probably thinking in the domain and range you would have here um, 9. Tapos dito negative 3 and 3. Is that it? Okay. However, this is not a function anymore. Kasi, ang definition, ano lang siya, re relation siya. Kasi for a function, sa so kunwari, h of something equals something definite. So ito kasi, h of 9. Ano siya, negative 3 or positive 3? If you say both, then hindi siya function. Kasi uh, a, a function, you're supposed to think of it as an input-output mechanism. So parang meron kang ano, processor. When you, put, when you input something, so of course, dapat may output. But what makes it a function is that for an input, there is only one output. So itong uh, tinitignan natin ngayon, if 9 is an input, tapos kung dalawa ang output niya, negative 3 and positive 3, that does not describe a function. I mean, things like that can be studied, but uh, in our discussion of functions, that's not included. Okay, We are going to talk about inverse functions. And so in the first place, they have to be functions, which means uh, what is being described here is not going to happen. Okay? Okay. So I was going to say, and then I have So g of x equal to x squared plus 1. Hold on. I should have used g here. Okay, I should have used g. g of a equals g of b equals 10. So it does not follow that a is equal to b. So for a one to one function, uh, there is only one corresponding point in the domain. For a one-to-one -one function, every point in the domain does its own thing. 
walang magkakapareho. Okay? So kaya siya ano, one to one function. Okay? Nung y equal to f of x, if it's a y if it's a one to one function for every x there corresponds exactly one value of y by virtue of it being a function nung pinag-usapan natin kanina ito i'm going to cross it out hindi yan function kasi if it were a function for an x value there should only be one y value dapat exact one okay and what makes a function one to one in addition is the following for every y there corresponds exactly one value of x. Okay? So kaya siya one to one. Kasi for a given point in the domain, unique nung kapartner niyang point y in the range. And vice versa, for every point y in the range, unique nung partner niya na value x in the domain. So one to one function. Okay, you're probably wondering how are one to one functions relevant in our situation right now? Okay. An inverse function uh, is one to one. Because yeah, Sige, uh, you, you, you are familiar with this. I know, I know relationship between one to one functions and, and functions which have an inverse. Hindi po sila the same. Kung kung po kayo, yung square root is not a one to one function. The cube uh -huh. root is. Pero yung mga ano po, yung, yung nga po, yung inverse sign, uh, 180 minus that is also the same naman. Tapos na yun sa cosine naman po, 3. Oo, ayun. So, so sige, i-iron natin, i -iron out natin yun. Ah. Alright, but one-to-one -one functions are very much related to which functions have an inverse. Alright, so ito. Um, the function g of x equal to x squared plus 1. Okay. The function g of x equal to x squared plus 1 with implied domain the interval the interval negative infinity to infinity is not one to one what about the function h of x equal to x squared plus one with restricted domain zero to infinity is this now one to one hmm. okay sorry ang um, ano hindi ko let, let me take the opportunity to add ano nangyayari sa graph ng one to one function uh, okay, because it might be, it might help to uh, uh, visualize it. Wala po, wala po you, can, you, can, you, can, you can draw a vertical line and a horizontal line simultaneously. Uh, vertical line lang po. Oh. If you're po thinking about the vertical, also, po also horizontal. Na they would, uh, wala pong, only one point will be hit. Mm -hmm. Only one point will be hit. Okay, for horizontal lines. So that's the thing with a one-to-one -one function. All right. So kasi halimbawa, ito, meron tayong, uh, let's say the graph looks like this. Okay, x squared plus one. x squared plus one. So for x squared, uh, g of x equal to x squared plus one. So we see that um, for a level 10, uh, the, the x coordinate can be three or negative three. Uh, not drawn to scale. So, ando nung 10, tapos andito nung negative three or positive three. So, what happens is that because 
uh, there are two points on the graph which have the same y coordinate of 10. So what happens uh, in this case is that there is a horizontal line which intersects the graph in two or more points. Okay, so there's a horizontal line which intersects the graph in two or more points, as opposed to the other graph. I'm not going to try to come up with a super accurate sketch, 2x cubed plus one, um, something like that. What was accurate? Is it accurate? I, I guess, okay. So Baba said that the shape is the same. So dito is that um, if you consider a particular point in the range, I considered uh, 55, okay, 55. There is only one corresponding point in the domain, only three, which is responsible for 55, which means that uh, for uh, every horizontal line, Every horizontal line intersects the graph in at most one point. So, pending no point of intersection, but if there's a point of intersection, that's it. Okay, so this is a criterion. The horizontal line test. Okay. And if a function has a graph which passes the horizontal line test, which, uh, then that means the function is one to one. Okay. If a function passes the horizontal line test, then it is one-to-one, -one. okay? So that's an uh, easy enough criterion, which for me, me is useful, all right? Sometimes more than the definition. If you could visualize and you could imagine that, oh, hey, every horizontal line is gonna intersect it in at most one point or not at all, it, and it doesn't matter how high or low the line is, then you can conclude the function is one-to-one, -one. okay? So my question here is, um, what if we consider the function h of x equal to x squared plus one? And I understand it's the same formula. However, we are restricting the domain, which means that if you look at the graph, you are not gonna be looking at the entirety of the graph of y equals x squared plus one, but this time we're only gonna be looking at a portion of it. Which portion? the one that's above the domain zero to infinity. So the graph now y equal to x squared plus one uh, should uh, look like this. Okay, so, so something like that, but we're not taking the whole thing, only this. Okay, because the domain is zero to infinity. And actually, actually nothing stopping us from including zero. Might as well include zero. Okay, so on the x-axis, uh, it will be these points, x uh, from zero onwards. So this is our domain. And then we're only taking the portion of the graph, which is above the domain. Now, my question is this, the, this function along with the given domain, is it now one-to-one? -one? Yes. All right, so, so the answer is yes. All right, because this time, if you're going to think of uh, the, the situation f of h of x is equal to 10, are you able to conclude what x is? So for 10, which is an output, do we know who is responsible for it? Seem responsible for it. So now you see that it can only be 
3. Hindi nakasama ng negative 3 because negative 3 is not in the domain anymore. Right? So what this shows is that a function may be not one-to-one, -one, but we can, if it may be possible to restrict its domain so that as soon as you do that, one-to-one -one na siya. All right. Um, so, okay, fact. So this are, uh, actually, this is a theorem, okay? If a function is increasing, then it is one-to-one. -one. If a function is decreasing, then it is also one to one. Can you imagine why? Or how, how would you argue? Why is it that when a function is increasing, it must be one to one? If it's increasing yung, ano po, yung continuously, it means that yeah, wala, uh, pong, wala pong if you put a horizontal line. There will be no there will be no other possible there will be no possible other other time when the function was at that exact moment. Say steadily right, right. Eh. Uh -huh. steadily decreasing naman po, kumbaga, you just flip the slope. Mm -hmm. You just flip it. And I uh, remember you talking, um, using the word continuous. Actually, even if Hindi continuous, let's say the graph uh, were to look like this. I may mga butas, butas po. Yeah, oh, kutunari may may butas. So, ganyan. Okay, one-to-one -one pa rin siya. Kasi ang condition naman, according to the horizontal line test, uh, at most one intersection point, pwede ring walang intersection point. Ah. Okay, so that's why what I mentioned here is every horizontal line intersects the graph in at most one point. Okay, so for every point in the range, it's the lang nung a responsible point from the domain. So if a function is increasing, then it is one to one. If a function is decreasing, then it is one to one. Question: If a function is one to one, kailangan ba increasing siya? Kailangan ba decreasing siya? Or not necessarily? Mm. Kahit kahit ano, mag imagine ka lang ng graph. So can can you imagine being able to draw the graph of a function which is one to one, but neither increasing nor decreasing? Kasi kung nasa middle po yung flat hindi po yun tama. So, it has to include something about increasing and decreasing. Oh, wait, actually, uh, yes. Kumbaga po sa, you can make a, like a plateau. Yung sa, mm -hmm. ah, wait. Actually, even if you make a plateau, that means there are multiple points. Actually, it's oh, a okay. number so, of points. Uh, so, what, what do you think? Kailangan ba there really is for no a one-to-one -one function? Yeah. Ah, all right. Um, actually, actually, may way. Ito, let, let, let me show you. Oh. Let me show you something. Some, some, some may way. Meron way. Ito, how? Ito, x axis, y axis. Tapos, let me draw. Oh, yung parang humaga po sa cosecant, yung, 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 ano, yung, ano po na graph po nun. Yung parang, 
gagal po sa Cindy tapos um, yung right after right at that exact moment nas galing naman po siya from negative infinity Sorry what what what's that again the late yeah, I used to okay Yeah kasi you 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 mentioned cosecant pero uh not it's actually not related to a cosecant No oh, papa pipera po yung graph po oh. ng cosecant para may ganyan na ta po eh pag uh, actually kayo tangent din po yung graph niya pag uh, at at in this moment it uh, before right exactly before that moment papunta po siyang infinity tapos uh, right after that moment from negative infinity pababa siya uh I'm still not sure I don't know what, what, what do you mean by wait, wait are you talking about the graph of the tangent function Opo, par may ganun po siyang ano eh, yung ganun to po na parang property pag pag may okay. ganun po siya. May, yung as yun ito, po ito, yung as may asymptote na. Siya. Oh, ayun. So ito yeah, okay, if that's what you mean ng asymptote, ito, meron may meron asymptote dito, ito. Ito na asymptote. Opo. Ayun. So itong ano, itong ah, all right. So so that's so you're referring to the graph of the tangent function. In terms of the asymptote, so the asymptote ng tinuto ko mo, yeah, actually, ito den, uh, itong portion ng ano, uh, ng ng nasa first quadrant, ng paakyat po kung sa positive y-axis, so asymptote rin yun ng positive y-axis, alright, so, so yeah, anyway, so I hope you're ano able to see that the the this uh graph of this orange function actually passes the horizontal line test. So therefore, uh, we have a one-to-one -one function. Okay. So are you familiar with uh, no, piecewise functions? Because uh, you, usually when we are working with functions algebraically, may isong formula lang. But uh, sometimes you have to use different formulas depending on the case. Like for example, f of x is negative x. If x is less than or equal to zero, on the other hand, if x is positive, then f of x is equal to 1 over x. May parang dalawa po yung, dalawa po yung ano niya. Pag uh, iba po yung interval, iba na po yung, kung mag-iba na po yung function, pinag-merge-merge na. Oo, oh, oo, oh, oo, oh, oo. Oh. And um, so from the graph itself, we can see that it passes the horizontal line test. And therefore, it must be one-to-one. -one. Okay, okay, so so let me write down the argument. Tapos gusto ko din gamitin ng definition. All right, from the graph, we see that f passes the horizontal line test. So f is one to one. Now, in terms of the definition. Gusto kong ipakita paano siya magagamit. Ito nung ano, ito nung um, def, oh, sige, sabi mo, di ko ginagamit ng highlighter, no? It, ito nung ano, no? if f of a equals f of b, we must be able to show that a equals b. Okay? If it follows that a equals b, then f is one-to-one. -one. All right? So, a uh, way to prove that f is one to one. Assume f of a equals f of b, and then prove or show that a can a must be equal to b. All right, in accordance with what I highlighted. So, kumbaga, uh, if you assume that there are two letters responsible for the same point in the range, then you show that they must be the same thing. They must have the same value, these two letters. So, ito. Um, okay. Suppose f of a equals f of b. Suppose f of a equals f of b. So gagawin ko, I'm going to um, assume, I'm going to assume two cases. 
case one, f of a equals f of b, suppose their common value is positive. Suppose the common value is positive. But I'd like to point out that um, data self function. So I'd like to point out that um, if x is positive, mangyayari, f of x is 1 over x. But then in that case, because x is positive, then f of x would also be positive. And then suppose, on the other hand, that x is less than or equal to 0. Ano mangyayari? Oh, hold on. Sorry. I meant x pala. Okay. X pala, not negative x. Kasi nung graph ng y equals x, ito yun eh. And I'm trying to get this portion in the third quadrant. Nung y equals negative x, di ba ang graph niya ito? So this is not what I meant. Kasi, kasi ito na kailangan ko nung nasa third one. So that's why I replaced uh, the definition of f. So if x is lesser equal to 0, f of x is equal to x. Anyway, if x is lesser equal to 0, then f of x is equal to x, which is less than or equal to zero. All right, so I'm pointing that out because, okay, case one, if f of a is equal to f of b and it's positive, then from the observation in red, a, because f of a is positive, then a must be positive. And because f of b is positive, then b must be positive. So therefore, we can replace f of a with the following. Because a is positive, then f of a must be 1 over a. And because b is positive, then f of b must be 1 over b. And therefore, because consequently 1 over a equals 1 over b, you will get the conclusion a is equal to b. Case number two. Suppose f of a equals f of b, which is less than or equal to zero. Then from the observation in red, there's something stuck in your teeth. Okay. So because all right, f of a equals f of b less than or equal to zero, then a and b are both less than or equal to zero. And then in that case, a is less or equal to zero, so f of a equals a and f of b equals b. So in both cases, it follows that a is equal to b. So starting with f of a equals f of b, we are able to conclude a is equal to b. Therefore, f is one to one. Rigorous na proof po para malaman kung one to one. Yeah, uh, uh, proof na one to one. So, so yeah, and I was also able to show you that Okay, if a function is increasing one to one, if a function is decreasing one to one, sha, pero pwede pa rin maging one to one, kahit only a portion of it is increasing and only a portion of it is decreasing. So in that case, itong function f, it's neither increasing or decreasing. Because when you say a function is increasing, it's supposed to apply to the entirety of the problem. Parang sinabi mo, ay ano, perfect ka, pero nga lang may imperfections ka. Eh, hindi perfect kasi may imperfection eh. So, parang ganun ng adjective na increasing. So, pag increasing ng function, dapat for, for the whole thing, hindi pwedeng may exception na, ay, except for this interval, except for this part, hindi na increasing. Eh, kung may exception, then that means it was never increasing in the first place. Apo. All right. Now, um, nawan ko kung naiinip ka na, no? Pero, ano okay. ba nung, ano nung... I mean, I know. Okay. Uh, sorry, ma'am. No, no, it's not going to floss and then push it. Okay, 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 okay. All right. Just, just go floss. Okay.
Thank you for coming. Sure, sure, sure. All right. Okay. So, babalikan natin nung ano nung one to one functions. Uh, because now, nung sine inverse function. Oh wait, ganito ganito. Um, so tignan natin. Ito. Question. Is f of x equal to cosine of x one to one? No, especially no. especially pag uh, skin you were na po sa middle, especially makina na po kada. Oh, <laughs> like your term ng the skewer. Uh, what about g of x? Hindi po. In there, okay. Is a periodic function one to one? How is it periodic? Does a periodic function mean uh, kailangan po na? Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, let, let, let me explain what, what I mean by a uh, periodic function. It means that. Um, well, uh, examples of periodic functions are our trigonometric functions. Uh, ibig sabihin, uh, uh, there is some number P such that uh, F of X equals F of X plus P. So the P for period. So if you take the cosine function, so observe that f of x equals f of x plus 2 pi. Right? Essentially for what? For the what? cosine function, 2 okay. pi is the period. It's literally nakasulat po, nakasulat po mismo. If f x is mm. equal to f x plus p, it means there's a different number a. Yeah. Where okay. in the, it will be equal. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So any periodic function is not one to one. So therefore, the sine function, the cosine function, tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant, these are not one to one functions. All right. Pero ganito, ano ang ipuprove natin? Ishi show ko. A function has an inverse if and only if it is one-to-one -one function. On, if and only if it is a one-to-one -one function. So, kunwari, meron tayong function and it has an inverse, then one-to-one -one siya. Or vice versa, if a function is one-to-one, -one, then it will follow it has an inverse. Pero parang ang weird nun kasi the sine function is not one-to-one -one, and yet we have the inverse sine function Diba? Ang labo nun, diba? Okay. Alright. Pero i-iron out natin to. Nung mga ganong subtle din. At paano nangyari yun? Paano nangyari yun? Okay? So first, I need to define ano ba ibig sabihin ng inverse function. Kasi sa calculator, ang dali-dali mag-type mag ng sine inverse function. Alright? But I want us to have a deeper understanding. So, babalik tayo sa one-to-one -one functions. Now, let's talk about inverse functions. So, definition. The functions f and g are inverse functions if okay number one for every x in the domain of g you're familiar with the domain and range of a function yes domain oh, x all right ranges okay the domain is the, uh, the the set of all allowable values of x so in other words, if x is in the domain of g, it is possible to evaluate g of x. 
All right, and I'll be abbreviating DOM, the domain of G as DOM G. Okay, for every X in the domain of G, so the condition is that G of X will in turn be in the domain of F and F of G of X equals X. So I think that this equation is what a lot of high school students are gonna be familiar with. I don't know, I know if F and G are inverses of each other. So kung ano, no, para mangyari, nung X ipasok mo na input for the function G, lalabas G of X, tapos pag evaluate mo using the function F, ibabalik nung original starting value. So kung baga, the function F reverses what the function G does. Okay, go ahead, Joshua. So, una, for every x equals dom g. So, does this mean, let's say, po arc sine sine uh, 59 pi over 5. That's totally out of range for, ano po na, for oh. the mean of, for the domain of the sine. But, so does this mean na uh, arc sine sine 59 pi over 5 is not equal to 59 pi over 5? Yes. What? Yes. Oh, eh, kasi kaya nga dapat maingat tayo. Maingat tayo sa domain and range ng uh, especially when we're talking about uh, itong mga inverse functions. Okay, sorry, can, can you say it again? Pa, pa, para lang malina. I think I understood what you're saying, but ano with yung, situations like this, I want to be absolutely clear. When the, ano po, when the, let's say po, X is totally out of range of sign, let's say po, uh, Arc sine sine 39 or 59 pi over 5. Wait. Arc sine of the sine of? 39 pi over 5. 39 pi over 5. So arc sine of the sine of 39 pi over 5. Actually, um, okay naman. Sandali. Ah, so ang tanong mo, is this going to be equal to 39 pi over 5? No. What? Oh. It's an inverse function if it does not inverse the function. Wait, wait. wait. Ito, yun nga, kaya dapat sa sila, sine of 39 pi over 5. May evaluate mo ng arc sine of the sine of 39. Actually, kahit nga, uh, ganito, ganito. Ito, um, Sine of, what did I make 39 pi over 5? But then I have sine of and, uh, um, pi over 3, 60 degrees. Compare that to sine of 2 pi over 3. Pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 60 degrees, and 120 degrees. So therefore, supplementary sila, and therefore, they have the same uh, sine value. Ang sign nila ay the square root of 3 over 2. However, uh, when you punch in uh, arc sine, arc sine of the square root of 3 over 2, ang lalabas, it's not 2 pi over 3, but rather it's going to be pi over 3. Okay? Hindi pwedeng merong two choices kasi. If you are dealing with a function, whatever you feed it as input, there should only be one choice, one output. Otherwise, hindi na siya function. So arc sine of square root of 3 over 2 equals pi over 3. And therefore, we end up with the following peculiar situation. Arc sine of the square root of 3 over 2 is the sine of 2 pi over 3. So I think this is more comparable. And this shows that, hey, when you take the sine of 2 pi over 3, and when you take its arc sine, the result is not 2 pi over 3, but rather it's pi over 3. So what just happened here? Arc sine of the sine of 2 pi over 3 is not 2 pi over 3. Okay. So, okay. It, Yes, mind-boggling. So, kaya ito, hindi pa ako tapos. All right? Hindi pa ako tapos. For every x in the domain of G, okay, 
Okay. So the condition is that, uh, well, for every X in the domain of G, so that G of X can be evaluated. But if we are interested in evaluating F at G of X, then that's why G of X has to be in the domain of F. And then if everything is in order, then F of G of X is going to be equal to X. The, the second uh, condition is that um, for every um, X in the domain of F, so what should happen is that uh, F of X, which can be evaluated because X is in the domain of F. So you have f of x. f of x should be in the domain of g. And in this case, g of f of x is equal to x. So, uh, uh, sine arc sine. Oh, so this is. OK, so kasi ganito. Um, ito tie up pa natin with. Uh, the, the, with, with one to one functions, pero ito bibigyan kita ng hint ha. Uh, it's via this example. Okay. G of x equal to x squared plus one. On its own, it's not one to one. Kapag ano, uh, wala well, well, kang kudwari, g of x equals x squared plus one. However, if we modify it, ito, x squared plus one. But with restricted domain zero to infinity, naging one to one na siya, di ba? So a function, even if it's not one to one, you can restrict its domain. It will become one to one, and once you restrict its domain, now it's gonna have an inverse. We can make a. We can make a. This is mean, but we can make a sort of a, a domain of values of x. Where where in oh. that's, the, that's the maximum of that's the maximum domain wherein it will oh ito po yung parang wavelength yung nakita ko po yung parang ganun oh. so 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 we're not gonna take the entire sine curve kukuha tayo ng isang portion lang niya a portion of the sine curve where it's gonna become one to one because when it becomes one to one now we can talk about an inverse and that's gonna be the sine inverse function. All right. So, kaya tayo nagkakaroon ng ganito mga paradox kasi the sine function, the original version, wala naman talaga siyang inverse eh. Kasi we're gonna prove para magka-inverse ang function, dapat one-to-one -one siya. And yung sine function, hindi naman one-to-one -one eh. So, the original version of the sine function, it's not one-to-one, -one, Therefore, it has no inverse function. But what we're going to do is take only a portion of the sine function, restrict the domain so that it becomes one to one. And once that happens, then we can start talking about its inverse sine function, the arc sine function. All right? OK. So that's why. So that's why we're coming up with the seemingly paradoxical situations. Let's say, Hey, you're talking about ano dito eh, nung original sine function eh. Eh, hindi naman yun nung inverse ng arc sine function. Okay? Okay. So that's why we are going through these things carefully. Okay, so that eventually when we get used to what's really going on, we are going to be able to see through these seemingly paradoxical situations. Okay, notation natin. Um, if f and g are inverses of each other, so I think you're familiar naman with the notation that um, g is f superscript negative one. And uh, f is g superscript negative one. So of course, you, we don't mean taking the reciprocal, but the superscript negative one means it's the inverse of the function f. And it's the inverse of the function g. And so, so much so that uh, if f of 7 is equal to 1, then it means f inverse evaluated at 1 is going to be equal to 7. So but that's the thing with inverse functions. In case it's not clear, okay, if f is 7 is equal to 1, is equal to 1, 
why must f inverse of one be equal to uh, seven? Because um, bakit nga ba? Ah, uh, well, kasi ganito. Why? Kasi from the second statement, diba, f of 7 is equal to 1. They're using the second statement, g of f of 7 should be equal to 7. Okay, ito, g of f of 7 should be equal to 7. So that's where this came from. But then, if f of 7 is equal to 1, then that means that thing inside is 1. So g of 1 is equal to 7, but g is the inverse of f. So that's why f inverse of 1 is equal to 7. All right. So for inverse functions, So for uh, f and f inverse, if f of a equals b, then f inverse of b equals a. And if f inverse of c equals d, then f of d equals c. So parang nagbabatuhan sila ng mga inverse functions. Uh, are, are you familiar with the relationship between the graph of f and its inverse? No. Po. No. All right. Okay. So mangyari kasi ganito. Suppose, okay, AB is on the graph of F. So, ibig sabihin nito, F of A equals B. Okay, kasi diba the Y coordinate B is the result, the output, what is produced. But if F is equal to, but if F of A is equal to B, then, ibig sabihin, f inverse of b is equal to a. So, consequently, for the inverse function, when the x coordinate is b, then the y coordinate is a. So, b a is on the graph of f inverse. So, kunwari, if uh, 2, 3 is on the graph of F, then that means 3, 2 is on the graph of F inverse. Pag, pag palitin mo ng X and Y coordinates, you will get a point on the graph of the inverse. So, visually, uh, ganito nung uh, magiging manifestation. Uh, let's say A is here and then B is somewhere here. Okay, so this is the point A, B. Okay. But now let's try to look for where the point uh, B, A is going to be. Nung point B, medyo malapit siya sa X sa origin. And dito nung B, nung A, mas malayo siya sa origin. So nandito C, A on the Y axis. So this point, uh, in green, that's going to be B over A. Okay, that's going to be B over A. Uh, geometrically, what relates these two points is that okay, the line Y equals X is uh, their perpendicular bisector. Bakit? Bakit? Ano slope ng line y equals x? Exactly negative 1. Uh, yung y equals x plus the slope is exactly 1. So, 
Pero ito? Over, A minus B over B minus A can be proven easily to be equal to 1. A negative 1. Negative 1. Furthermore, what's the midpoint of the green point and the orange point? Ano nung midpoint nila? Uh, A plus B over 2. And yeah, that's the same thing. Pala. All right. So the midpoint, that, that blue point, has x and y coordinates the same. Therefore, it's on the line y equals x. And furthermore, no. because the green and orange points are connected by a segment having length negative 1, therefore, the perpendicular bisector should have slope 1. OK, so now convinced? Wow. OK, that. Um, so mayare the BA and AB, they are mirror reflections of each other. So consequence nito, all right? Okay. Uh, consequence. Okay. The graphs of F and of F inverse are reflections of each other across the line y equals x. Why? Because um, for any point a, b on the graph of f, you will find uh, the, the mirror reflection b over a, it will be a point on the, on the graph of f inverse. So if you are going to think of doing that, uh, throwing a point on the orange graph of F and try to identify the corresponding green point on the graph of F inverse. So yeah, you're throwing it across the mirror, the mirror being Y equals X. Okay, so therefore, consequently, the graphs of F and of F inverse are reflections of each other across Y equals X. So halimbawa, ito nung line Y equals X. Drawing that then uh, purple. Okay, maybe. This is the graph of y equals x. If the graph of, um, say, this is the graph of an, uh, um, a function. So, uh, kung kunin mo nung point na to, ang mirror image niya would be this. And then for, uh, if you take, ito naman, here. Itong orange point. Ang mirror image niya would be this. If we take uh, these two orange points, so ito, here on the y axis and ito, their mirror images, their reflections would be the following. B and E. Ito. Ah, yeah, helix, no? All right. So, that was. Uh, no point that's already on the line y equals x, its mirror reflection will be itself because it's on the mirror. So this is what we're gonna get. Ah, yeah. all right. And okay. Yeah, all right. All right, it will be on the graph. So this is the graph of F inverse. Okay. So now back to, so I'm, I'm gonna tie up now, uh, inverse functions and one-to-one -one functions. So, which functions 
have an inverse. Because not all functions have an inverse. Okay, theorem. A function f has an inverse. It's the most sinusabi ko kanina. If is true. and only if f is one to one. Okay, so kung mapapansin mo, uh, the drawings na ginawa ko ng orange graph, it's increasing, it's one to one. Uh, the graph of f inverse, it's also increasing, so it's one to one. So uh, after all, what's the inverse of f? f inverse. What's the inverse of f inverse? It's f. So according to this theorem, uh, because they each have inverses, then each of them is one to one. Okay, question. Bakit ano? Um, bakit kailangan maging one to one ang function for it to have an inverse? All right. Because um, I haven't I haven't written down the proof of this for a uh, very long time. Siguro balikan ko to next time ha. Balikan ko to next time. The rigorous uh, argument. Uh, bakit? Isang book. Yeah. <laughs> Hindi naman ano lang. Uh, siguro seventy nine pages lang. Tapos the book has 80 pages. So, you know, it's not the whole book. Alright. So, example. First turn. The domain of the function f of x equal to 3x squared plus 5 so that it would have an inverse. Well, from uh, the, the, the fact that we just uh, pointed out, um, well, that the function should be one to one. But the graph of f of x equals 3x squared plus 5 originally looks like this. Okay, it's not one to one because it's gonna fail the uh, it's gonna fail the horizontal line test. So you know, two points of intersection. Okay. So uh, for the function f to be invertible, for it to happen inverse, we should restrict its domain, uh, make it smaller, so that the graph that we would end up taking would just be a portion, and the resulting graph should be one to one. So there are two options or two general uh, options. Either we uh, take only this portion of the graph or we take only this portion of the graph, the one on the right. Okay, because so then the graph will now pass the horizontal line test okay because there will now be only one point of intersection or no point of intersection okay but for any horizontal line there is at most one point of intersection not two or more just one okay although i didn't ask for it in the problem what is the inverse function so for f of x equal to 3x squared plus 5 so gagawin natin, we are going to take okay, f of x equal to 3x squared plus 5. Anong domain? In this, uh, of the three figures, in, in the second, the domain we're taking is negative infinity to zero. Ayan, it includes po. All right, a negative infinity to zero, so ito yun. Uh, 
a negative portion of the x-axis, let's include the origin because there is no reason to exclude the origin. What's the range? Origin ba po yan? Huh? Origin ba po yan? Uh, ito. This is the origin. Why am I pushing the function? Hold on, sorry. Um, what's your question? Wala naman po yung, wala naman po yung origin sa function. Hindi po tumatama yung origin. Well, that's a graph, no function. But, but uh, sorry, uh, when, when I was, when I, okay, sige, ganito lang. Um, the domain is from negative infinity up to zero. So I drew the blue arrow to represent its domain on the x-axis. So, so I meant uh, um, include natin nung zero. But, but uh, when I was talking about zero, I, I was thinking of this point, the origin. So now, what's the range? The range. So this time, think of the shadow on the y-axis. Yes, it's from? 5 to infinity. Yeah, 5 to infinity. So that's the range. Five going to infinity. Okay. Now um, I didn't ask for the drawing, but let's go ahead and do it. Ah. Okay. Oh, shucks, been <laughs> Okay. When the when the when the, when the no, it's all gone. Uh, this is all I wanted to delete and the, the, this arrow. Hang on, let's see again. Uh, that will do. Okay. Or I guess it, it depends on the sequence of actions. Ah, uh, never mind. So yeah, let me just leave the purple point. Okay. So no, we overrun the point of orange. Para ano? Ah, uh, okay. So yeah, orange. Okay, fine. All right, yeah, it's okay. All right, cheating. <laughs> so ito, it's uh, five here. So if you imagine drawing the inverse, dito siya makes a start sa five. All right, tapos uh, line y equals x is going to be here. Okay, y equals x. So how's the graph of the inverse function going to look like? So the graph, the orange graph is in the second quadrant. So the reflection should be in the fourth quadrant. So it would be this. Okay. What is the formula for F inverse? So here's where I suppose you may have uh, Babaka dito ka nung a custom or society, but nung, when you find the inverse function, uh, you write y equals 3x squared plus 5. And then you okay. solve for x this time, right? Okay. So you're, you're going to get uh, y minus 5 over 3 equals x squared. And uh, this time, when you take, um, you solve for x, so it'll be plus or minus the square root of y minus five over three. But can we make a choice here between plus or minus? Be, Is it positive or negative? Which do you think? The negative one. Negative, because the domain consists of uh, negative numbers along with zero. Okay. So because x is in negative infinity to zero, so that means x is negative square root of y minus five over three. So this equation describes the function f. So for the inverse, we switch the roles of x and y. So f inverse is negative square root of y minus five over three. And for this inverse, what is its domain and its range? The mean. Uh, the main one. From... The x is zero to negative infinity. So, uh, 
This time, look at the green function. Ah, so the domain is from five to infinity. Yeah, and what, what's the range now? The range is from zero to, there's an asymptote. Or is there none? Is it an a, a asymptote ba siya? You think no green? Asymp asymptote ba no, as it goes down? So what you gotta do is think of think of the behavior of the orange function. Does the orange function have an asymptote? Does the orange graph have an asymptote? Wala. No parabola. So therefore, no green function may asymptote or wala. Wala po. Okay, so. Wala then. Okay, so what's the range? Two, zero. So what this illustrates is that for a function and its inverse, the domain and range switch. Ah. Right? So domain of f equals the range of f inverse. The range of f is the same as the domain of f inverse. Okay. Uh, we... Domain is only one, one more letter than range. Yeah, sorry. The main is only one more letter po than range. Oh, nga no, tapos bababat, but could in abbreviate nung, well, domain has two syllables, range has one syllable. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why, that's why. All right. Now, uh, let's do the same. Uh, let's do the same for... I, I, I want to draw the line y equals x for, for the second instance, but I, I, I don't know if the line y equals x is going to cross the graph of uh, 3x plus 5. Anyway, solve that then. Um, y it equals x. Cross the graph, well. Does it? If it does cross the does graph, what will happen? And because I, I just want to be able to draw y equals x. So I don't know if y equals x should cross the orange graph or, or if it won't. Uh, I mean, if there's a point of intersection, then there should be a solution here. That does it. The x squared minus x plus 5 equals 0. What's the determinant? The... Ah, the determinant is negative. I so therefore, what, I forgot what the determinant the of discriminant. Sorry, discriminant, discriminant. You're absolutely right. So I was thinking about something. <laughs> uh, but, but thanks for pointing it out. I was uh, talk, talking about determinants. It's an, another thing. I was talking about it. I was talking about it the whole week in class. So, okay, yeah. uh, I mean, determinant mode rather than discriminant. But yeah, it's discriminant. So it's negative. So therefore, this has no real root. So okay, that means there's no intersection. So when I sketch the line y equals x, okay, I'm justified in assuming it's like this. And then um, it's 5 here. So for the green uh, graph of the inverse, it's going to start here at five. And all right. Oh, no. Ah, really? So it's a f of x equals 3x squared plus 5. Its domain is zero to infinity. Its range is five, five to infinity. For the inverse function, what do you think is the inverse function going to be? Positive. Oh, like, I mean, does the square root imply yeah. that it's the principal? Made a mistake here. Or yeah. Oh, principal square root yon. Okay, so the square root, root symbol. Square root of x minus 5 all over 3. 
So this time positive, no? Because when you go to the computation we chose uh, earlier, if X is this time from zero to infinity, then X will be uh, the square root of Y minus five over three. So if you replace X and Y, you're gonna have Y equals the square root of X minus five over three. The domain will be five to infinity and the range is going to be uh, zero to infinity. So showing that the domain and range uh, switch positions. Okay, so um, uh, because I think we have to, I don't know, 916. So this is going to be an easy algebraic exercise. The function uh, f of x equal to x plus seven over x minus k is one to one. Find, okay. Uh, green box alert, green box alert. Show that f is one to one. I mean, I claimed it, but show that it's a uh, one to one. And then next, okay. What? Find. That's a paradoxical. Okay. Show, because I'm just making this up as we go along. All right. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. So yeah. Oh. Yes. Oh. Okay. Oh, wow. Show that the one function oh. f of x equal to x plus seven is one to one. Find the value of k. So it all well if f is one to one, then it's gonna have an inverse. Next. Find the value of k so that f is its own inverse. What? This is really trippy. Yeah, f inverse of f is also x plus 7 over x minus k, but that's not going to happen for all k. So, parang ano, mangyari. For many values of for, for many values of k, the, the inverse will be some other function. But what should k be so that f will look exactly like f inverse? So that's the problem. Okay. All right. We still have the geometry or the, the trigonometry problems, okay, for free to try. Okay. Hey, how's your hand? Okay, then. Okay, then. Okay, then. All right, all okay. right. So, again, yeah, Joshua and Sergey. Thank you. Yes. Pedi kaming amal. Ano ko na yung stop na yung recording. Pedi po kaming ano, mingi na ano yung CV. Pina. Ng CV? 